Well, thank you, Gary, Gary Beers, for joining the show. Uh, we uh, thought we'd introduce ourselves first so you know a little bit about us and uh, we can then sort of go from there. But uh, we put this podcast together about two and a half years ago. Uh, we seem to know a lot about you and you probably don't know anything about us, but uh, one of our goals were to do quite an accurate sort of retrospective on In Excess and each band member, help them get into the Rock Hall of Fame have some fun along the way and help sort of build a bit of a community, which uh, over the last 132 episodes, uh, we've sort of managed to do, Gary. And uh, um, I guess with B and I to start with, we just want to thank you for your musical contribution over the journey. Uh, and um, we want to start off a very important question. Um, what happened to Manly this year in the rugby? <laughs> um, you know, oh, I'm not, I shouldn't laugh, that's really. That's a, first of all, Hi, nice to meet you guys. Sorry it's taken me so long to get on the show, but um, great to be here. As far as Manly goes, I was actually starting to feel pretty good until Turbo you know, had another breakdown. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I thought maybe it's going to be a good year, getting, changing coaches and you know, just a different direction. But you know, even though I don't think Desi was really the problem, but I don't know. I'm really hopeful. I mean, you know, it's it's just a shame that 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 Turbo just keeps having you know issues with his with his. Uh, his fitness and stuff and health, but you know, good luck to him. I, I really, I'm looking forward to a good year. I think other teams are going to have really sell years. I think, I think the Bulldogs are going to have a good year. Mm. Uh, you know, as long as the Storm don't have a good year, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking like a true city sider. So, so do you get the? Uh, I know you're a bit of a patch at rugby fan. Do you get the games in live there? You got all the the appropriate uh, uh, infrastructure and networks to watch as much as you can. Yeah, there's a there's a, a Fox app. Yeah, um, you know, I don't watch their news, but I watch their sport. Um, yeah, there's, I got a, a, a Fox app for the rugby league, and um, and you know, um, yeah, and I'm I'm begrudgingly watching a few of the American football games after being here for 17 years. I've, I'm that desperate. I got to watch their games. But, oh. <laughs> but the thing is, I watch the recordings of it. It just it just shows me the highlights because it's such a boring game. You know, it, you know, it's just it takes so a long much. time to hit its uh, straps, doesn't it? You know. Does and when you watch a game, it's like it's there's so much advertising. It's yeah, it's it's, mm. it's like four hours for a game of eighty minutes, and it's and by then you're half asleep, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, good old league. I love rugby league. Mm. Yeah, as, be, as, be, be my compadre has uh, has for many many uh, Aston years. Villa. Huh? <laughs> Aston Villa. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> has had a very curious question, and we would th thought we would just start with the real basic stuff first off about uh, your name, B. So I thought you would throw that one to Gary. Yeah, the name, uh, the Gary, Gary part of it. So it was a misspelling in a book or on a on a record. Um, what what happened there? How did it become? It just goes back to the first album or a couple of albums. My my then girlfriend did did the the writing. She was actually uh, a graphic designer and did. Um, did the, the actual handwriting of all the lyrics and the credits on the first two albums. Yeah. And she was just having a bit of a a, a fiddle and and just kind of, um, I think Michael's then girlfriend used to call me Gary Gary. Oh. And so Rebecca, my then girlfriend, decided to write it as Gary Gary on the records and spell it the way it was. So it was her call. Okay. And so it wasn't a misspelling. It actually was. Well, she meant to do Michelle that. said it. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. Well, I guess I have to find her and ask, but I, I always thought it was intentional. But I know there is some, if you look at the albums, I think on the first album in excess, that you see where she's actually testing her pen or testing, <laughs> and, and it got reprinted. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, maybe maybe it was a mistake. I'm not sure. But either way, it's kind of stuck. I like it. You like it. Yeah, yeah it's very cute. Yeah. Hey, didn't you and want to say something else or can I carry on for a minute? You go. Yeah. Okay. How did you meet Andrew? Because everybody okay. knows how Andrew met Michael, but I don't know the story of you meeting Andrew. Um, it's going to be interesting because I'm actually in the process of writing a book finally because I've been asked so many times, but that will be how it starts, is that, is that um, I went to Bogola Surf Club um, just to see – some friends of mine, actually, they used to play bass and drums in Guinness, which was Tim and Kirk's first band. And they were sort of moonlighting with this other guy playing a gig. And they were playing at Bulgola, the Bulgola Bop. So they went down to Bulgola Surf Club with a mate. Um, and we got there to watch them, help them set up. And I walked in the room and they hadn't found the power switch and it was all dark. And it was, you know, it was like getting under dusk. 
and there was a guy in the corner. I went, oh, there's Tim Ferriss. And, and I didn't actually get all, get along with Tim Ferriss because I was the meathead rugby player and he was the, the you know, the musician, the, sort of the rock star already in, in the school. Um, and I walked over, to, yeah, even though I didn't really get along with him, I thought, well, I know him. So I got the only person in the room I know. So I went and said hello and it was Andrew. And I said, oh, oh, he goes, oh, I'm not Tim, I'm Andrew's brother. I'm, I'm Tim's brother, Andrew, and, and you're Gary and you've just got a bass guitar and um, can we jam? Because I oh. apparently I, I got a bass guitar, and I became the only the, the the second bass player in the entire sort of area of the North Shore that we lived, besides the bass player that we were there from Guinness that we were there to see. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the next day I was I was jamming with Andrew and John. It was like I think eleven or twelve at the time. So yeah, it was uh, that was. You were only fortunate. eleven. No, I was I was I'm the oldest. So I was I was. Yeah, like, eleven. 16 or 17. Yes. And 13 or 14, and John was 11 or 12. So it's, it's yeah. Wow. It goes down. It's so young still, though, yeah. hey? God. I don't think about it. I mean, you know. Mm. We think about your own kids now. You go, wow, yeah. what I was doing at your age. <laughs> yeah, my, my twins were uh, 11 and a half, and that's, you know, John Farris yeah. by then. John was like drumming <laughs> in a band. Like, drumming. He was amazing. Like, he was yeah. always, um, you know, so that's how I met Andrew. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. So uh, we thought we'd do something we did similar with uh, John Farris, Speak of the Devil, a couple of weeks ago when we spoke and sort of working a bit backwards because obviously uh, um, as nostalgic as talking about NXS is, we always like to think that, especially with John as well, that you are creating music now um, and have been so over a number of years, obviously being in LA, um, being probably uh, a bit of a gun for hire for different people as well. But uh, tell us about Ash and Moon and where it's at at the moment and how COVID hopefully is uh, behind us and it can start be, being the entity you want it to be. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it is interesting because we finished the record and signed a distribution deal with a, a label and um, had a tour set up and then COVID hit. Like we actually literally signed as the week COVID hit um, and then we went into lockdown. So our tours got cancelled for two years in a row and, um, we released like five songs through the label before the label kind of just, you know, shut down, you know, branches in different parts of the world. So we kind of just put everything on hold, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, we're all, yeah, everyone was like looking after their family. I, you know, I got looking after my family. I had a family member with, um, you know, autoimmune disease. So we really had to go into lockdown. The kids were doing the home Zoom school. So it all became about families and looking after the families. We all got COVID. Um, you know, boosters, you know, getting the immunization and the boosters helped, but we, you know, we ended up all getting it. So we all went through it like everybody else in the world. Um, yeah, luckily, no, no major damage, but, um, yeah, as far as Ashen Moon went, we just had to basically put it on hold because you know, we did one show in Dallas at a big festival. It was fantastic, but, you know, Texas doesn't, you know, they, they kind of ignored the whole, um, COVID thing. Um, and it was a bit, it was liberating but off-putting to walk around you know that you know ten thousand people with no masks and no what mm -hmm. a world about covid right in the middle of it so um but where uh, toby and i are still um you know we're still writing we're just you know re just starting to get back into getting it going again so um we're writing new material we still haven't released the full album so we still got you know the album that we wrote a couple of years ago we still have to release that um, we have a new guitar player, you know, uh, just, just, you know, moves along, but you know, other things have taken over. I've been you know, building my bases and you know, getting that company going, but uh, the band is now back to being a priority because um, I'm very proud of the music, very proud of um, what we've done together. Me and Toby and myself. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Just looking forward to it. Some great tunes. Mosquito. Loved that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting because that was something that I wrote years ago because a lot of it's just in my, in my computer hard drive down behind me from the days when i was in a band with you know with one of the two of the best songwriters in the world and andrew and michael so i didn't get a guernsey so um you know i've got all these bits of music and that was you know mosquito was a just a riff and a and and, a, and some whistling that was that, that melody <laughs> in the beginning it was a, like something i really basic i did years ago and toby just grabbed that and that became mosquito so it's just been a very um, a good project to have all these bits of music that I have used, not used, and for Toby to listen to them with fresh ears, and for us to work together writing new lyrics and just taking a whole fresh approach, you know. And and 
working with Toby has been amazing because I've never really had a songwriting partner like him. You know, Andrew yeah. had like really Andrew, and we we're always the guys on the outside looking yeah. in. So yeah, yeah. And he's such a great guy, isn't he? He looks lovely. Yeah, you, did you yeah. did I hear right that you actually um, created the graphics for Ash and Moon as well? Yeah, I did all the I did all You're the artwork. So clever. <laughs> I did at school I did um electronics and in, industrial arts and and which was mainly you know drawing and and mechanics and design um you know I didn't do very well at school but I yeah, the other things I, I enjoyed doing was woodwork and drawing so I and, and electronics so yeah now I build bases which is woodwork and electronics and and the artwork I've always just been a fan of of artwork from guys like Roger Dean who did all the yes artwork mm. and, and his yes logo i've actually been to his gallery in san francisco and bought like prints and copies and lithographs of his actual yes logo which is it's really where cool. the yeah, letters yeah. run through each other yeah. so i just saw that idea just while we're, we're mixing the album I just sat there and did all the you know all the artwork fantastic sorry i better let my host go <laughs> that's all right that's all right now you know the wonders of social media we've sort of seen footage you, you've posted uh at various sales sort of events with your guitars gary um uh, it must be great sort of getting out there and talking sort of uh, guitars with uh, real learned fans. I'm sure a few people have noticed and recognised you out in the field while you've been doing some sales with them. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of go along in my shorts and a, and a cowboy hat but uh, and and take my kids and my dog and we just we set up a, a tent and a, a stall at, at a local uh, bluesgrass festival about two months ago here in the in the area where I live in, in uh, Agoura Hills. And um, it was just fun meeting people and and it's just opportunistic to meet people and and work together with them so yesterday I did a photo shoot at my house and also here at the, at the warehouse the studio on the my workshop for the basis and um so I'm really getting serious about it but these are the you know this is these are the beauties I build they're stunning um, yeah, yeah they are. beautiful and they're you know made to look vintage and you know this is brand new but it's, it looks you know when did you start making them? I started working on electronics. I mean, I've been fiddling and, and pulling bases apart since the beginning. I mean, we were all so broke that I was buying you know, Fender copies, Fender bass copies, and and just pulling them apart, you know, turning them into fretlesses, turning them back into fretteds, and just changing pickups, just doing what I could to make them sound better because they were like they were a hundred dollar guitars. So until wow. I could finally afford a Fender. Um, and I just worked, started working on a pickup design back in Australia, and I kept working on it here in LA, and I finally got the pattern for it. So this is a That's very gorgeous. Yeah, um, the color as well. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? It's a candy apple tangerine. You can't really probably see, it, but it's got candy apple tangerine. Candy apple tangerine. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've picked like five or six colors and and body, a couple of body styles, and I've, I'm just starting to. Not mass produced them because they're all pretty much handmade, custom made. But I'm starting to, I'm investing in getting more made so I can sell them because I've, I've been building them and I've got all these beautiful bases that I sit and play with and I've gigged with and I, you know I, I love them all. But they're like my babies, but I got to start selling them. You know, yeah, I, I bet. Yeah. How, how I long does it take to make happen. make one guitar if you went from go to Y? Well, if, if it's just me, it's it's months. But I've got. You know, I found a guy who does my painting now, and um, yeah, I, I I got a pickup winder and just, and learn how to wind pickups to, to build you know the initial. Uh, it's, you know, it's like it's got four coils. It's yeah, you know, it's a bit technical, but it's a it's kind of funny because a pickup is it's been going around since the turn of the century. It's just a, a wire wrapped around magnet, so that's what's in every speaker. It's what's in, I and mean, that's what a pickup is. So I'm kind of shocked and happy, happily surprised that I got the pattern for it, but no one's ever done what I've done. So the pickup that I've designed, one pickup can give you five distinct vintage bass sounds. So, um, and it really works. So uh, that's all I use for the Asher Moon record. And it's all I've used for all the sessions I've been doing lately. Because um, I only, I arrived in America with pretty much just one bass. That was my old faithful in excess bass. And that's just sitting upstairs, locked away. And I've been using my own basses. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, you know, a, a little passion I've been wanting to do for a long time, and now I'm doing it. Wow. Has it extended out to other artists who, who within the town or the community or the industry in terms of some inquiry or certain sounds? I mean, a, a, a great band or guitarist themselves uh, always looking for new angle and the sound. Um, have you had some interest there? Yeah, I did. I did. As I said, I, I 
that bluegrass festival was actually like uh, some really amazing players there. It was it wasn't just bluegrass music. There was a, a Cuban, uh, like a you know a famous Cuban jazz player was there playing in a like a Latin band, and he came over and he had to play and. He's going to order one, of, and I've got to build him a special one. And then another guy who plays violin turns out he was, you know, just as good on bass as the other guy. So, you know, it orders is slowly starting, kind of at the moment by word of mouth. But I did the photo shoot yesterday. I'm going to start turning into a business. I'm actually going to get finally get off my butt and get a, a you know, a website because yeah, building it is is the is kind of the the fun. Your passion part but the, the, all the rest of it the business part i'm not very good at so i, I finally uh, i met some people at that bluegrass festival that are helping me out and i'm working with now so you know i'm getting very serious about it and i'm, I'm going to do it in a professional way because i you know it, you know i'm a musician i'm not a businessman yeah, yeah. I've got to start putting a, a good no, team together the, 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 world, the world needs to know about these um guitars definitely are you going to make yeah. double basses as well <laughs> uh, you know, double basses are, a, a, yeah, um, they, that's a real art form. I mean, that's 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 creating an acoustic instrument is a real art form. I'll probably make some semi-acoustic, which is like you know, semi-hollow basses. But I have the, the patent I have is for four string through to ten string, which I wow. didn't. I I just wanted the patent for four and five string, but I end up getting it through to ten string. So I can, I'm actually going to um, myself and the and the tech that I'm working with who lives out in um joshua tree he's my the late the, the guy I'm, I'm working with the pickups with now um we're gonna you know, next step is to build a guitar version like a six string guitar version and see what that sounds like because it might sound like it might not work at all but it might be you know like world changing it's uh, yeah music changing. Mm. yeah so we'll see interesting 